Have you ever had a frozen Linux system and didn't know what to do? Today we're unlocking one of Linux's best kept secrets, the magic system request key. Now stay tuned to the end of the video because near the end of the video, I'm gonna show you where you can get a free custom bash script that will automate the whole entire process of determining your kernel version if you have this ability compiled into your kernel and if so which keys does your system have built into it by default what are those key values and what do those values represent i've written a custom bash script that will do all of those things for you and it will print to the screen which system request keys have been built into your system let's go ahead and get started with the video Welcome to Fresh Forensics, your go-to destination for everything Linux. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I'm over here at github.com forward slash Douglas Fresh Habian. This is the starting point for all of my various GitHub repositories. If you have never seen any of my previous videos, hey, I'm Doug, I'm a Linux sysadmin, and I am deeply passionate about all things Linux. Over here on this page, you can learn more about me. You can verify my various certs. The one I am the most proud of is the LPIC one that certifies me as a Linux system and server administrator. Now, if we come up here to the top and click on repositories, that will take you to this page where you will get a list of all of my repositories. The one that we are looking at today is called Magic Key Vault. If I click on that, it will take you to this page right here. The first thing that you will see is this wonderful image of Tux, the Linux mascot, dressed as a sorcerer, and he is hovering his hands over this magic crystal ball that is rendering fresh forensics inside of it. Very cool. So what is Magic Key Vault? This is a collection of systems and methods for securely managing request keys, enabling controlled access to various services and functionalities. It's a somewhat convoluted description, so we will unpack that a little bit. So let's first talk about system request keys or the system request key, also known as the print screen key. This is a powerful tool available on Linux systems that allows you to send low-level commands for system debugging, recovery, and emergency shutdowns. Now this guide basically explains how to work with the system request key, how to configure it, and what the different functions mean. So I have made this incredibly easy for everyone. On my GitHub page, I walk you through all of the commands step-by-step, step, what they actually mean, and you can essentially just copy and paste each command into the terminal if you want. But then also, as we will see shortly at the end of the repository, if you don't want to do this manually, I have provided this wonderful bash script that will automate this whole entire process. But to get a better understanding of what's actually happening, I do suggest that your first time doing this, you go through the process manually. So I'm gonna be doing this on two different systems to show you the differences. And for that, I have a couple virtual machines open and running. Okay, so the first virtual machine that we are inside of is my Ubuntu testing virtual machine. And this is actually the latest version of Ubuntu as of the recording of this video. That is Ubuntu 25.04 code name, Plucky or Plucky Puffin as they like to call it. So what I'm going to be doing here is basically following the instructions to do all of this manually. I'm going to do this on my Ubuntu system and we're also going to do this on a Kali Linux system so you can see and compare the differences. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is determine the kernel version of the system and we do that by running uname-r. Once we get the kernel release version and here is an example of that, then we can use that to check the kernel configuration file for this variable or this option that is referred to as config underscore magic underscore sysrq. And, and that is because if, and most Linux distributions do have this enabled, but it needs to be compiled into the kernel. So that's why we need to get the kernel version. And if on most systems that you have been using for longer than a few days or a few weeks, 
you're going to have multiple kernel versions in your uh, boot directory and that is because of the fact that when you update and upgrade your system you know it hangs on to more than just the latest version so we got to first determine the latest kernel release on your system and then once we do that we head over to that directory and we basically grep for this variable inside of the kernel and we'll get back some example output and then we kind of have to decipher what that output is so we're going to run uname r that'll give us the latest kernel version on this system once we have that information we can run grep with dash i for case insensitivity and we are grepping for that variable which is referred to as config underscore magic underscore sys rq and we are grepping for that inside of the config dash latest kernel version etc so that's what that looks like go ahead and hit enter and what we get back is your typical output on most systems so now at this point we need to decipher some of this the why means yes that it is enabled it was it was compiled into the kernel we don't really need to be concerned with this this has to do with serial so the two main things that you're concerned with are just the first two lines so why is yes it was compiled it is available and then we have a value this value is in hexadecimal and we need to convert this from hexadecimal into decimal and then further break down that value and what it means so i have provided a copy and paste command that will allow you to do that we can also just run another command that will check the current value of of this and that would be to run cat on uh, proc sys kernel sys rq and that gives us a value of 438 so that is one way to get this value now over on my github page i do give you another way to do this uh, this is a copy and paste command but um, this may not work in all shells so to give you an example of that it's down here underneath nine understanding sysrq bit mask and for the example on the github page it had returned a value of 176 when running the previous commands so i'm going to go ahead and copy this command and i'm going to show you an example of running this um, inside of a different shell than the, than the one on the screen so i'm going to open up another shell this is on a completely different system so let me paste that command into the terminal hit enter it gets that that value that you would have uh, gotten from running cat on proc sys kernel sys rq but it goes further than that so it takes that original value that it gets and then it breaks it down into its components so in this example we have a value of 176 and when we run that bash one liner it takes that 176 and it breaks it down into its individual values that that make that total value up so we have three values 16 32 and 128 and this is where this can get a little complicated and you basically have to take each one of those values and then you have to go reference these to a, to a chart it'll tell you what each one of those individual values means so for example back on my github page underneath section four understanding the sysrq value here are some of those values so when i ran that command you saw that we had 16 32 and 128 so if we look at 16 that means that the system is capable of syncing all mounted file systems 32 means that you can remount file systems as read only and 128 means that the system allows rebooting and running power off from the command line so what i have done is i have made this process much much easier for you and that is because i have provided you with a bash script you run the bash script and it will do all of that for you so to get that bash script you're going to want to do a git clone of my uh, magic key vault repository so you come up here to the green box open that 
copy the HTTPS URL to the clipboard and then back on the command line inside of our Ubuntu virtual machine we're going to go ahead and do that git clone when the git clone has completed CD inside of the newly created magic key vault directory and if we do an ls that is what we have very 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 basic the only thing that you're concerned with inside of this is going to be the magic key.sh bash script we will go ahead and make that executable by running chmod plus x on magic key.sh now if we run ls you see it shows up in green letting us know this is executable and ready to go so let's go ahead and run this with a dot forward slash followed by the name of the script. Hit enter. And you get a bunch of stuff immediately printed to the screen. Let's go up to the top and break this down. As always, you get some ASCII art. You know I love to include ASCII art in all of my scripts. First thing that it does is it checks the kernel version and then it prints that version to the screen. Then it checks for that special variable inside of the kernel config it finds it and it prints it to the screen just like we did manually. And then it's gonna cat out that file in proc to get the value just like we did. And then it's gonna break that value down, which is the best part of this script. So it will actually take that, that total value and it'll break it down into all of its components and it will print each one to the screen. So we see just by running this script, that looking at the, the breakdown of the values, we have all of these different features enabled. That is the best part of this script, that, it, that it, it will do all of that work for you. So on this system, we had a value of 438. Depending on what your security risk tolerance is, you know, that's, that's probably very high. And we can adjust these values and perhaps we'll take a look at that at a different point in this video. Uh, but first, Let's go over to my second virtual machine that I'm running, and this one is running a default installation of Kali Linux. All right, so if I cat out Etsy OS release, we are on version 2025.1 of Kali Linux. It's the latest and greatest as of the recording of this video. And once again, if we head over to, um, to my GitHub repository, I'm going to see if the awk command will work inside of this terminal real quick. So let me go ahead and copy that. And it does work. So here's an example of running that bash one liner. And this is very, very useful in and of itself. So it was able to get the total value and then it broke it down into each value that makes that up. And if we were to cat out uh, proc sys kernel and uh, the sysrq, that is the total value. So we're getting the same value we did on the Ubuntu machine, which is 438. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a git clone of my magic key vault repository. I'm gonna cd inside of the newly created directory. We're going to make that script executable, and let's go ahead and run the script. And essentially we get pretty much the same output. But I'm doing this to show you uh, that this does work um, on multiple systems. I have tested this script on numerous Debian-based systems. Now, when I was testing and uh, fixing some of the issues with the script, one of the problems that I was running into was with the breakdown of the values. So it would catch most of them, but it might miss some of them. And that is what I need the help from you guys for. And if you run into any issues in using this script where you, you get any, any error here at the bottom, it will show up in red and it will be an error pertaining to a value that it was not able to essentially decode for you. Let me know. Put in a git poll, reach out to me on YouTube, however you choose to, but let, let me know so that I can uh, fix the script, make any adjustments necessary. Uh, so I, I have tested this on Debian-based systems, and I've tested it on Kali Linux, on on um, on Raspberry Pi. Uh, but that's as far as it goes. So let me know if any errors um, arise in the script, and I'll fix them. Uh, so that's going to be it for running the script. Very simple. The last thing that we're going to look at is how we could adjust some of these values manually. So 
gonna go back over to the GitHub page and scroll down a little bit. Now, what you want these values set at, once again, this is gonna depend on a lot of different things, such as, you know, are you using this in a production environment? Is this for testing? Personally, on the machine that I use most often, I would want to restrict this. And in order to restrict it, um, I could copy and paste this command right here. This would disable the sysrq functionality completely. So I might do that on my main system. Uh, but on a different system, perhaps I'll enable every one of them, you know, just so that I can test them out. So this depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So if we wanted to enable all of the functions, we can set the value to 1 or 255, which would mean full access. So here's an example of doing that. I'm going to copy and paste that command and hit enter. Now, if I cat out that value, we see that we get 255. So let's go ahead and run that script again. And now when we run that script, we have more output here at the bottom. And this is essentially what it would look like if you had every single thing enabled. And if you're not quite understanding what that means, um, I can't actually use the key combos because that, that will disrupt what I'm doing with the recording of the video. But these are key combos that are enabled on your system that will allow you to do things such as, for example, when your system freezes, Freeze. if you have uh, some of these enabled, you'll be able to utilize a key combination and it will send a, a low level signal to the kernel to kill processes or to just reboot the system. You know, perhaps the most famous of these key combos that most people are going to be familiar with is actually referred to as the famous REISUB sequence. This is a well-known emergency recovery tool when the system becomes unresponsive. And over on my GitHub page, I have a breakdown of that. Okay, so we took a look at how you would enable all of the functions, uh, but that is not going to make it persistent. So when we shut the system down, you will lose that. If you want to make it persistent, then this is how you would do that. Come back over to the GitHub page. Once again, you can just copy and paste this underneath of number 10. Let's take a look at making changes to increase the posture of our security. To do that, you would echo zero into that file. I'm gonna copy and paste that command, go back to the terminal, paste that in and hit enter. So now if we cat out that value, we get zero. And if we run the script, we get nothing back for the breakdown of the values. And once again, that is not going to be persistent. So if we want to make that persistent for it to survive across reboots, we can copy straight from the GitHub page, I'll paste that into the terminal, and then to immediately apply that change, we're going to run the sysctl uh, command with a dash p. Now I want you to quickly take a look at the rest of my GitHub page on your own time. Underneath key features, you can expand this section that will go into great detail about the features of the script that we demoed in this video. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you have this wonderful bright yellow link for buy me a coffee. If you're interested in supporting my work, this is one of the many ways that you can do so. Up here on the right hand side of this repository, as well as all of my repositories, you will see links uh, to Patreon, buy me a coffee, as well as Ko-Fi. If you found this video helpful, support don't I'm forget doing. to like, and comment, and subscribe else, for more just subscribe Linux, to the channel, cybersecurity, and, like and hacking and you content. You are doing a lot. And as always, keep learning and stay fresh. I'll see you in the next video.